सुप्रभातम सारे ऑडिबल यस सर सर स्टार्ट और वेट वेट फॉर फॉर मिनट्स बारह अभी बजने के है ना कवर एमएचएस ऑब्जर्वर सर संपत भटाने सर इज गोइंग टू जॉइन सुन आई सर हेड जॉइन और सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सो नाइस टू सी यू ऑन आवर प्लेटफॉर्म वंस अगेन यस सर यस गुड गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम वेलकम मैम वेलकम सर थैंक यू वेरी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम चरडे मैडम नमस्कार 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 इट्स सो नाइस टू सी यू हियर थैंक यू Recently, we celebrated the birthday of uh, Alka Charade, Madam. So I wish uh, belated happy birthday once again. Thank you, thank you. Today there is no electricity at our home, uh, particularly in central part of the Nagpur. Khedikar uh, sir, I think Khedikar sir, uh, Dange Madam, have you reminded Khedikar? Yes, sir. Sir, 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 who? Yes, I have reminded, and uh, I told them that I will start at twelve o'clock. Okay. आप कौन से call हैं ताले में? Call मतलब जरिए करें जिस चीज़ पर. Uh, I think, uh, Madam, uh, almost forty-two people have joined. Ah, so you can start now. Ah, Shubhrabad, Shubh Shubh Madanya Acharya. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all in today's webinar, Rachna Anveshna, two thousand twenty-two, to be conducted by Jupiter Ayurved Medical College, Nagpur, and GSC Alumni Association, Nagpur. Today, among us, we have distinguished guest faculties, Dr. Subhash Wage. Sir, Principal of our College, Dr. Sachin Khedikar, Sir, HOD of Shari Rachna Department, Shri Sai Institute of Ayurveda Research and Medicine, and Chairperson Dr. Alka Chaudhary, Madam, HOD of Rachna Shari Department, Bausai Mulak Ayurveda College, Nagpur, and also MUHS Observer Dr. Sampat Batane, Sir, Principal of BR Harney Ayurveda Medical College, Thane, Mumbai, is also with us. and dr santosh dhamesha president of the gac alumni association is also with us uh, i request them all to extend their wishes for the program so uh, friends this is the 22nd webinar conducted by our college under able leadership of our respected principal dr subhash wage sir and our motivating dynamic secretary mrs tharini nikhare madam Okay. Without wasting much time, I would like to invite today's today's first guest speaker, Dr. Subhash Wagesar, 
to enlighten this subject. Before starting the lecture, I would like to introduce our dynamic principle. Despite of being person of the Rog Nidan, delivering on the Rachna Shari topic, this shows his profound knowledge of Ayurveda. So now I will introduce our principal, Dr. Subhash Vage, sir. Uh, Subha, Dr. Subhash Vage, uh, he has done the MS from the GAC in Nagpur, MD in Ayurvedic Rog Nidan from the Sri Ayurved College, Nagpur. Apart from these degrees, he has many degrees and diplomas to his credit from the medical sciences to Indic sciences. He had written 18 Ayurvedic books, twice bought Best Book of the Year Award from the Ranade Foundation, Pune. Wrote 45, uh, 42 research articles in national and international peer review issue journals. Review, revived eight laws Sahita of the Ayurveda and was felicitated at Latur by uh, La, uh, Latur by Ayurveda Update Group of the same. He is on the editor board of the ISSN journal Joanam, uh, IJIM, CMIR, RI, uh, Revista, etc. He presented many research uh, papers in various national and international conferences. He twice got Best Paper Award. He was a member of team for Framing Nidan Dictionary by GOI. He was invited as a resource person to many national and international seminars and conferences. He took lectures for international delegates of Brazil, Portugal, and Russia. He received many awards, first from the Dhanvantari Award from the Lions Club of the Nagpur Ayurved, second from the Nidan Shri Award for Ayurved Ma, uh, from Ayurved Mahasambhalan Vidarbha Pranta, Best Global Teacher Award from the LCONA, Best Research Award from the ARCA Academy, uh, prestigious Yadavji Trikam Ji Grantha Puraskar from the Khadiwale Pratishtan, Pune, Best research, research Author Award from the ARCA, Chapter of the Honor from the Ayurveda uh -huh. Update Group, Latur, and Best Book of the Year Award from the Ranade Foundation, Pune, Best Paper Award from the Shri, Ayur Shri Ayurveda College, Nagpur, and last Best Paper Award from the MG Ayurved College, Samangi Varda. So now I request Dr. Subhash Vage sir to please give and deliver us a uh, lecture. So sir, please over to you. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam, for uh, precisely uh, introducing me. But uh, before I actually start uh, my lecture, I would like to have uh, uh, introductory comments from our MHS observers, Sampad Bhattane, sir. Uh, sir, please, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting you, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a, a good initiative has been taken by Jupiter Ayurveda College. And uh, secondly, the principal itself and his biodata itself speaks many things. And a lot of efforts he is taking to, uh, you know, propagate the Ayurveda, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to the students and to, to society also. It's a good move. The MHS has accredited all the seminars which have been planned by uh, your college and the various departments also. I congratulate on behalf of the uh, university, all the uh, dignitaries of the university and the speakers, delegates, the students who are uh, attending this uh, webinar. Uh, I think this is the uh, enriching the, you know, the nurturing the students who were upcom up upcoming of the, you know, uh, future of the Ayurveda and uh, the speaker itself, the in spite of its subject, uh, the command uh, is speaking on the, the Rachana Sharira. I, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, more and more the important things with the Rogridan person speaking on the Rachana Sharira because <laughs> it starts from the uh, Rachana Sharira, uh, the, uh, the whole thing because Ayurveda <laughs> believe in that itself, the Shari Rachana and Shari Kriya and thereafter the other subjects also. Once again, the Good opportunity for me, uh, me also uh, to be part of with your uh, uh, seminar, webinars, uh, you know, uh, throughout your uh, uh, whole plan. So I congratulate all the team and my uh, best wishes I, uh, to all your uh, participants. In it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words and blessings. Thank shall you very I, much. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shall I uh, shall I uh, take a leave because I have some uh, another important one. Uh, yeah. If yes. I get the time in between, again I will join in. Sir. Okay, sir. We will anyway. We will send you the YouTube video also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I, I extend my best wishes to all your team, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, GSC Alumni Association President Dr. Uh, Santosh Dhamecha, sir, uh, is he with us? I cannot see him here. Okay, as and when he will join, we will uh, seek his blessings. Uh, we will start with the uh, our today's topic. Uh, so far now, uh, 98 participants have joined and it's better to start with now. So you will be amazed uh, why I chose this uh, this particular topic to talk upon, because uh, as I am interested in, as as the madam told in my introduction that I have degrees from science to Indic sciences, as I am very much interested in Indology also, and when pursuing the Indology, I found so many things uh, related to medical science that has been incorporated and uh, in the form of sculptures on various temples. And uh, amazingly, one of that uh, is the intrauterine fetal development. And not only that, I tried to correlate the things when I found, and uh, uh, many such sculptures there are on the temples in Tamil Nadu uh, showing the union of uh, sperm and ovum, and after that, the cell division, and ultimately the formation of fetus inside the womb. And when we, when I had gone through the description of in our science also, I thought it is better, or it is very important to let our students know the process of fertilization, fertile period and the concept of cell division to form embryo and from embryo to the fetus is entirely as fine in today's literature today's modern literature so let us see how that how that is i will share my screen uh, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. It is visible. It's visible now. Okay, fine. Uh, <clears throat> let us see the concept of uh, <clears throat> fertile period. We know fertile period that is period of ovulation. Ovulation which takes place on 12 to, uh, 12 to 14 days from uh, in between 12 to 14 days from the menstruation. Now, <clears throat> many people <clears throat> in our science get confused regarding the Rutukala. Many attribute Rutukala as the menstrual period only. That is not the thing. The Rutushetra Ambu bees, what are the four factors they have Acharyas have mentioned, which is essential for the process of fertilization that Rutu is the period of ovulation. How? Let us see. And <clears throat> in Yagya Valakya Smriti, it is said that Garbhadhanam to be done in the Rutukal period. So what is this Rutukala? And in Govil Griya Sutra also, we find <clears throat> our Acharya Bhela has quoted Govil. This is an important point is Uparata Shonita. When the menstruation is over, when the menstruation is over, that is then Sambhav Kala, Garbha Sambhav Kala, that is the Rutu Kala, period of old age. In Ashtang Sangra Sharishthana, it is said, Rutu to Drishta Arthavo Dwada Shratra Bhavati Shoda Shratra Itian. The period of 12 to 16 days from the menstruation. When the menstruation, uh, so when we call, calculate the 16 days and if you minus the four days of menstruation, that comes about to be the 12th, 12th day. 
12th day that is the period of ovulation and the uh, sexual intercourse in this period particular period leads to the progeny there are maximum chances of fertilization if one performs the sex in this period so should also uh, mention tata shuddha snata after the menses shuddha shap chaturthi ahani alankruta bhartaram darshe uh, now <clears throat> again the many people says that there is no concept of uh, in uh, i mean sperm or ovum in ayurveda whatever said is that uh, is that of a semen and artha uh, i mean shukra and artava but is an artava shuk, shuk, um, uh, the shukra is refers to the semen and artava refers to the menst menstrual flow this is misconception this is this is not like that they have clearly mentioned it is three visa and the purush visa let us see how uh although you find here shukra shonit sanyogit pukhalu kukshigate garbha sangya bhavati now the explanation for this shukra shonit what is the and confusion rises here that semen and menses mix together to form the garbha this is not like this it is clearly mentioned <clears throat> in subsequent slides we will uh, we are going to see also yada stri purusho vyavayah <clears throat> during sexual intercourse tat samaye karma vashat jantuh shukrena sah the sperms in the semen jantuh shukrena sah the sperms in the semen jarahu pravishya shukra shonite shukra shonit kalale जीव प्रवेश पंचाहत कललम भवती कलल कलल इज मेम्ब्रेन मेम्ब्रेन स्ट्रक्चर आई मींस आफ्टर दैट मिक्सिंग इट इज इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जस्ट थिन लेयर थिन लेयर अर्धमासे पललम भवती विपिन ने सम लाइक यू सी पीस ऑफ एंड उपेत मासे प्रादेश मात्र भवती एंड आफ्टर आफ्टर द मंथ्स पीरियड Uh, it is of the size of uh, little finger, little finger. This is mentioned in Narad Purana. <clears throat> no, again, please sh uh, shut this mouth, uh, shut this uh, uh, noise, please. Those who are uh, open their uh, speakers, they please shut down it. It's causing me disturbance. Nishek manavo, strinam bijam prapthum rajasya. You see now here also. The bija in a raja. Nishek mano strinam bija. Prapthum rajas the ten abibutam. Ten abibutam tat astairiam yati bija dwayam. Bija dwayam here. The three bija and the purush bija. When it unites, it forms the zygote. The first form of zygote is the kalal. Then budbudvatam. Budbud means the bubbles. The bubbles indicates nothing but the cell division type of that blastomeres bubbles. तथा पेशित एंड लैटर ऑन दी सम्मस्क्युलर स्ट्रक्चर यथा अनुबीजम सियात अंकुरा तद्वत उच्चते एज लाइक स्प्रोटिंग ऑफ स्प्रिट सीड स्प्रोटिंग फ्रॉम द सीड इन दैट फैशन फ्रॉम दिस जायगोट दिटस फिटस टेक्स शेप ऑफ फिटस टेक्स प्लस फिटस ग्रोस शुक्र शोनित संयोग आवर्तते गर्भ वृद्धि व्यवस्था नयती गर्भ उपनिषद नौ देर आर सेमी सो मेनी एम्पल रेफरेंसेस देयर टू शो दैट अवर आचार्य फॉर शुक्र एंड शोनित दे वर रेफरिंग टू दी स्त्री बीज एंड पुरुष बीज इसी आर्तम अभी त्री बी दोषे शोनि चतुर्थे पृथक द्वंदे समस्ते च उपसृष्ट बीजम बहुती इफ द आर्त गेट्स विशिएटेड बाय दि दोष दैट इज कॉल्ड एज उपसृष्ट बीज बीज दोषत् गर्भस्थ मारुत उपत आशा शंडी इन द शंडी इन द शंडी ओनी व्यापद बीज दोषा गर्भस्थ इफ देर इज डिफेक्ट इन दि जेनेटिक डिफेक्ट इन दि जायगोट इट सेल्फ फॉर लीडिंग टू दि डिफॉर्मिटी ऑफ दि गर्भाशय देर इज श्लोक फेम श्लोक ये अंगा विकृति जायते न उप जायते च anukta pat that that shloka implies you 
बीजात समाशंत उपतप्त बीजा स्त्री पुंस लिंग भवती द्विरीता अगेन दुनेक पीपल बर्थ ऑफ युनेक एक्सप्रेस बिकॉज ऑफ बीज दोषा देन बीजे अंत वायुन भिन्न भाव जीव कुक्ष मगुत यमा वाय दट मीन रिजल्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द डिविजन ऑफ दि जायगोड बीजा अगेन द बीजा देन ऋतुशत्र अंबू बीजान दिस फेमस श्लोक यू नो दट द बीज इज एसेंशियल the three bees and the purush bees both the uh, sperm and the ovum both are required now it's very clear that sperm and ovum are told in our ayurveda again yatha bijam akal ambu prumi kitak agni dushana virodhi sandushtam tatha shukra sharinam here again they are referring to shukra bijam jaise akal mein pani se prumi se kita se agni se bij kharab ho jata hai waise hi agar शुक्र शुक्र बीज अगर दुष्ट रहा तो गर्भपत्ति नहीं होती अगेन दे हियर दे आर रेफरिंग टू द शुक्र बीज दैट इज नथिंग बट द स्पर्म अगेन क्लब्य इफ यू इफ यू सी द क्लब हाउ क्लब्य रिफ इज मात्रो पित्र हो बीज दोषात अशुभ ही अकृता गर्भस्थ गर्भस्थ से यदा दोषा प्राप्ति रेतो वह सिरा अगेन हियर दे आर रेफरिंग दैट इफ द बीज द स्पर्म्स इफ देयर इज जेनेटिक डिफेक्ट इन स्पर्म और ओवम that may lead to the importance so it's very clear our acharyas they have referred to the sperm and the ovum by means of shukra and shonita we need not to confuse the things this confuse i i don't know why this confusion is going on in so long years and so many people they ask me in the wo likha hai wo irrelevant hai aisa hai waisa hai we don't uh, Read in depth and come to the conclusion very soon. Now let us see the concept of cell division and embryonic development from Ayurvedic point of view. Many people again say that the concept of cell division, mitosis, meiosis, and all those things are only mentioned in modern science, and there is no reference to it in Ayurveda. Now here, see here is clear reference. Prana ha tu prana is in um, for whatever the action, the vata is responsible as per Ayurveda. प्राण तो बीज धातु ही विभजति इट कॉजेस द डिविजन ऑफ दिस हाई गॉड गर्भस्य सर्व अंगवय दिस इज मेन्शन इन काश्यप संहिता असमान दिस हाई गॉड गेट्स डिवाइड 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 एंड डिवाइड्स टू फॉर्म दी फिटस अल्टीमेटली ऑल द पार्ट्स ऑफ फिटल फिटल ऑर्गन्स गेट्स डेवलप फ्रॉम दी जाय गॉड आफ्टर सो मेनी डिविजन बीज धातु ही विभजति गर्भस्थ सर्वांग हाउ दिस डिविजन टेक्स प्लेस एंड यथार्थ उष्मना युक्त वायु स्रोतांस प्रजाते अनुप्रवेश पिशित पेशी ही विभजति पेशी ही विभजति सेल डिविजन सिराम आपनुया करोति आशय संबंध एंड बाय डिवाइडिंग द सेल्स इट फॉर्म्स द डिफरेंट Ashes means the different systems, different all organs, uh, blood vessels, serum, apne blood vessels, etc. Everything by dividing the cells. Sarvayeva avayeva ha parman idin ati sokhmat asankya hai. And the, here the parmano, which is the smallest part of the organ, that is nothing but the cell. So parmano bhedina avayeva asankya ha. Infinite number of cells are there in body which gets divided tesham sanyog vibhage parmanu na karma prerita vayu karana or what is uh, the vayu is causing their cell vayu is causing the cell division karma ch udit vayu vasha sanyukta parmanu ha karya dravam arvate dvi anuk adikramena now how this cell division takes this from one cells two cells are formed that is diploid three cells triploid and like that arvate dvi anuk बॉडी यो प्रतिपन्न एक से मल्टीपल एक से मल्टीपल हो जाती 
Now this size is very important. Whatever the shlokas I had, uh, I have quoted up till now. Now, if you um, put the shlokas uh, in a proper sequence, how the things takes place? Nishek manav strinam bija. In the he, this in this slide, you can see the stri bija and the purush bija. After that, bija dhatu hi vibaj, formation of the zygote and bija dhatu hi vibhajati. Dvi anuk, tri anuk, adhikramane. Here you can see the diploid division. Then ekasya nanatva yoga, multiple, uh, see the blastomeres they are getting. Then strotansi prajayate. Then vayu anu pravishya strotansi prajayate. It is forming the different systems, ashes, uh, channels, blood vessels, etc. Karoti ashe sambhava. And finally the, uh, the shape of this fetus results. Okay, now uh, the below is the now this the this we have seen this the diagrams which are which are given in the modern science. Now these diagrams, the process of fertilization and cell division to form the fetus is uh, sculptured. There are stone inscriptions on the temples of South India. Here you can see the same. Uh, this the sperm causing fertilization of the ovum. Then you see to, to indicate division two cells, then from two cells, the four cells, and then ultimately the fetus in the womb with the placenta inside. You can very clearly they have uh, inscripted on the stone. Can you see it? Can you see it? Am I audible? Yes, yes. sir. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, fine. Now let us just pay attention. This is very important, very interesting also. Now uh, we will see the fetal growth, uh, monthly fetal growth, one by one. In the first month, as per Shushuta Kalalam Jayate, as per Charaka, Prathame Masi Samurchita Sarvadhatu Kalushi Kruta Kheta Bhuta Bhavati Avyakta Vigra Sad Asad Bhutanga Veva. I mean, uh, Acharya Charaka is of the view that uh, although it form, it takes the form of Kalala and it has the potential, it has all, all the rudimentary or uh, rudimentation of all, of all the organs inside it, but that is Avyakta, that is not develop in course sooner later in the uh, later in the course it's going to develop from this uh, zygote uh, again uh, <clears throat> the work but also prathame uh, avyakta prathame masi saptahat kalali bhavet uh, arundhata has clarified it the commentator of vagbata saptahat adya in the first week garbha gola kaha shleshma pindi bhuto bhavet saptahantar vyakta kruti kalali in the first week, it is the, the Garbha Golak is the Shleshma Pinda, only that membrane structure. And again, uh, sub, in the first week, Vekta Kruti, little bit uh, taking the shape and that is still in the form of membrane, Kalali Bhavet. This shloka from the Puranas, uh, which is from Narat Purana, we had already seen, Yadastri Purusha Vivaya Tatsamaya Karma Vasha Jantuhu Shukrena Sa Jarayu Pravishati Shukra Shonitam Kalale Pravartide. That Viryam Jiva Pravashat Panchahat Kalalam Bhavit in the five days. Ardhamase Palalam Bhavit and the Mase Pradesh Matra. This, this uh, Acharya Narada had uh, mentioned the size size of the uh, fetal development also. Uh, what what uh, what is the size? How the fetal development takes place uh, week wise? Uh, in as per Jyotish Shastra, as we are seeing this in Ayurveda and in the contemporary science, Jyotish being Jyotish and Purana being the contemporary sciences of Ayurveda, we need to uh, see the description given in that also. Uh, so far, uh, uh, Bhattapal is of this uh, Jyotish Shastra only. Garbasya Prathame Masi Kalalam Bhavati Shukrashonit Ghane Sammishrabhudeta Satra Garbasya Tasmin 
मासे शुक्र अधिपति एज पर ज्योतिष शास्त्र आल्सो इन इन फर्स्ट मंथ इट इज ऑफ इट इज लाइक कलला एंड स्लोली स्लोली इट गेट्स सॉलिडिफाइड धने सम्मिश्र भूते एंड एज यू नो दिस ज्योतिष बींग साइंस विच डील्स विद स्टार्स he had attributed uh, the first month uh, the first month to the shukra venus now again in markanda purana nisheka manavam strinam bijam prapta rajasya atha tena abhivutan tat staryam yata yati bija dvayam pitah so these bija dvayam kalalatvam budbudatvam peshitvam the transformation from kalal to budbud budbud means cell division blastomeres and peshitvam slowly the muscular structure pesham yatha that we had seen already and uh, according to garbhopanishad pakshat kathinyam ayati means pakshat means after 15 days and pindi bhavati masataha and after the one month period it again uh, so, uh, solidifies ऋतु काले संप्रगत एक रात्रम करीलम भवती सप्तरात्रम बुद्धम अर्भ मसातरण पिंडो भवती मसाभ्यंतर कठिन भवती दिस इज दि स्टेज ऑफ डेवलपमेंट विच इज गिवन इन गर्भोपनिषद देर इज वन बुक कॉल्ड राय सिंह विच इज रिटर्न बाय द महाराज ऑफ बिकानेर एंड ऑन ताम्रपत्र विच इज रिसेंटली बीन डिकोडिफाइड शुक्र शोणित संयोग प्रकृति आत्म विकार like the, like the fetal growth uh, the month wise in modern science we see the fetal development week wise yeah to the minute level so zygote under in the first week zygote undergoes cell division producing cluster of cells of same size but no significant growth the four cell division leads to dense ball of 16 cells which is termed as morula the seven cell division leads to the formation of dense ball of 128 cells which is termed as blastula in second week blastocyte undergoes trophoblastic stage with implantation in uterine wall fluid collects between outer and inner mass and the morula stage is converted into vesicle called as the blastodermic uh, vesicle this is which is referred in ayurveda as the uh, vayuhu vibhajati anganam and uh, strotas ashekarana the cells of trophoblast contribute in the formation of chorion and placenta in the third week gastrulation cells migrate to the interior of the blastula producing three distinct germ layers as outer ectoderm middle mesoderm inner endoderm each of the layer give rise to certain tissue of the body the neural fold head, fo- uh, head fold and cardiac primordium also starts growing in the third week so in ayurveda also masya bhantarena kathin in the in the last last week hmm, uh, this uh, peshitvam apnoti hmm. so acharya sushruta is also view of the view that uh, <coughs> sarva anga pratyangani yugapat sambhavati iti iti ahad mantra means all the uh, body parts it starts growing from the zygote yugapat means simultaneously garbhasya sukshatmat na upalabhate vanshan karudat tyut phalavatcha since it is very microscopic uh, the fetal development is very microscopic one cannot see evam garbhasya tarune sarva anga pratyanga shu satva swapi sokshmat anuplabdhi tani eva kal prakashat pravaktani bhavati so after after uh, certain kala means periodic developments all the organs finally gets uh, develop ultimately so this is how at the end of uh, one month the fetus looks like the rudimentary or uh, rudimentation of all the organs is uh, legs uh, hands grows internal uh, 
heart and uh, liver they start growing the head starts growing and the spinal cord uh, is developing stomach starts growing lung starts growing but all the all the rudiments we can see in the second month as per sushruta ditiye shitosh shmanile abhi prapachya manana mahabhutana sangato ghanaj sanjayate uh, as per charaka ghana sampadyate pindaha peshi arbudamba so this ghana sa, sangat that could be that could take form as a pind or peshi or arbud is of the view that if it takes the form of ghana then the male progeny results if it takes the form of peshi delicate structure then the female progeny results and if it takes the irregular uh, if that uh, zygotic division takes the form of irregular form then the eunuch uh, progeny may result acharya vagoda is of the same view uh, in puranas particularly narad purana it has mentioned that purna dvitiya purna purashakar matrata upagamya so as like we had said uh, we have seen in uh, the last slide that at the end of one month almost it takes the uh, shape of a uh, fetus although all the organs are yet to get developed but purne purusha purusha kar matrata upagamya so they were having the idea clear idea that it takes the form of complete complete form uh, yeah. in bhatotpalti in astra jyoti shastra also dvitiya peshi hi ghatitiya ghanata kathinyam bhavati tatra kujo angarupa adipti so it uh, in second uh, month uh, that take, uh, it becomes solidifies and the heart and the adipati is the mars mangal as it is being the astrological science in garbhopanishad it, it is mentioned that mas vena shiraha sampadyate means the development of uh, head occurs particularly head appears uh, prominently in rai singh so also dvi masa bham bhavet shirsham uh, they have uh, emphasized on the formation of head in the uh, second month as per modern science also uh, which has mentioned the fetal development week wise in fifth to sixth week the fetus is 1 inch long weighs 945 mg rudiments of liver gut starts developing leg buds nasal plate hand plate starts growing early face starts developing auricular and foot plate starts growing finger starts sprouting jaise ankur se sprout hota hai waise finger start sprouting also uh, starts growing uh head and uh, in uh, seventh week head and limb starts developing ossification commences straightening of the trunk occurs now here you can see in this pic in in this picture sorry in this picture you can see the head is become head is becoming prominent brain and spinal cord is formed now from the neural fold and upper limb becomes longer but bent at the elbow hands and feet turns inwards eyelids and external ear starts appearing they start appearing but not fully grown head becomes round so in from our science point of view also our acharya has also to, told that head becomes uh, prominent in the second month dvi masa abhyam bhavet shirsham now let us see of the uh, fetal growth in third month so in narad purana it is said that mas tritaye purne karcharanaadi vayamo upagamya in third month all the uh, the legs and feet and other organs becomes evident as per garbhopanishad maastrena pada pravesho bhaviti feet uh, the legs becomes prominent as per rai singh also three pani three masiki three and hands and feet uh, uh, feet and hands becomes prominent as you can see in this uh, 
पिक्चर ऑल्सो ऐस पर आचार्य चरका तृतीय मसी सर्व इंद्रिया सर्व अंगय यू कैन सी सर्व सर्व इंद्रिया सर्व अंगय योग पद्यन अभिनिवर्तते तृतीय एंड एस पर सुश्रुत ऑल्सो हस्तपाद हस्तपाद शिसा पंच पिंडका निवर्तते अंग प्रत्यंग विभाग सूक्ष्म व्यक्ति भवती मसे अस्य तृतीय गात्र पंचक मूर्धा सर्वसूक्ष्म अंग जन्म ऑल दि ऑर्गन दे बिकम्स स्लोली स्लोली इविडेंट एंड बिकम्स प्रॉमिनेंट सिग्निफिकेंटली प्रॉमिनेंट एस पर ज्योतिष शास्त्र तृतीय अंकुरत्पत्ति हस्ताद्य अवय and uh, as per modern science two uh, fetuses become 2 to 4 inches long and weighs uh, uh, embryo becomes sorry fetus sorry embryo embryo becomes 2 to 4 inches long and weighs 29 to 30 grams all body parts which starts growing simultaneously the arms hands fingers feet and toes are fully formed this is mentioned in modern science you see in th- uh, in the uh, third month आर्म्स हैंड्स फीट फिंगर्स हस्त पाद शिसा पंच पिंड का सर्व इंद्रिया सर्व अंग वय दे आर फुली फॉर्म सो वॉट एवर मेन्शन इन अवर सैंस मॉडर्न सैंस इज आलो इज ऑफ द सेम व्यू ग्रोथ इन फोर्थ मंथ एस पर पुराण चतुर्षु मसेषु गतिषु सर्व अयवान संधि भेद परज्ञान संधि भेद परज्ञान जॉइंट्स एंड बोन्स Uh, as per uh, the garbhopanishadana chatur uh, garbhopanishada chaturthi mase jathar kati pradesho the abdomen lumbar and kati pradesho bhavati as per rai singh swa kati anguli udaram turiye chaturthi mase udaram and anguli and kati there are the same view uh, in earlier also, in earlier times also they used to perform dissections and particularly after the death and they used to come to know of, about all these things i will this i will going to discuss after this lecture uh, as per charak sushil vagbada chaturthi masi sarva anga pratyanga vaga pravyakta bhavati garbha hudai pravyakti bhavat chetana dhatu abhivyakta bhavati tasmat nari dav vrudini achakshate chaturthi masi sthiratvam apadyate garbha tasmat tada garbini guru gatra adhikapate vishada sheshana it gains Uh, she gains the weight and feels the weight of the baby chaturthi uh, vyaktatam gana as per vagbhat also so as per jyotish science astini atasnayu shira chaturthi chaturthi asti sambhava the ossification and the bones becomes prominent in the chaturtha uh, and the snayu shira becomes prominent as per jyotish science now let us see as per uh, modern science pitam fetus uh, uh, <coughs> becomes 4 to 5 inches weighs about 113 to 141 grams you see heart and blood vessels are fully formed now our is also sarva hudam pravrutti bhava chetna dhatu avyaktu heart and blood vessels becomes fully formed reproductive organ starts developing hair starts growing bones become denser asti sambhava sandhi pravyaktata bones becomes denser eyes and ears starts growing fingers and toes are well formed so whatever mentioned in our science same is mentioned in modern science also regarding to the fetal development fourth month now let us see for the next month it's a bit problem it's not going down what is the problem मृणाल 
डॉक्टर मृणाल यस सर यानी कॉन्टेक्ट डॉक्टर श्रीकांत इट्स नॉट गोइंग डाउन यस वन सेकेंड आई विल कॉल हिम सर रिस्टार्ट करून बघायला कारण का त्यांचा फोन लागत नाही आहे ओके वेटिंग आहे परत क्लोज करून स्टार्ट करून बघा Yeah, it's not uh, going. I think. Sorry. Stop. Two slides have been created. I think. One. Uh, shall i leave and again join yes yes why not because uh, when i share it show i think i need to close this window uh, this one and this be closed so you leave the meeting and join but her hundred participant is already uh, uh, hmm. i will just wait with hmm. this can this is sharing but not going i think something problem in sir it's visible down. now ha uh, it's visible but it's not moving going forward further. okay okay but i will uh, uh, leave leave the meeting and then again join please let me join yes ओशन ओशन इज हियर ओशन महेंद्र यस मैम प्लीज लीव द मीटिंग फॉर अ वाइल फर्स्ट डॉक्टर वागे सर विल वेंटर देन यू कैन जॉइन ओके मैम बिकॉज पार्टिसिपेंट आर फुल नफीसा मुस्कान एक दो लोग 
प्लीज मीटिंग लेफ्ट करो फिर से ज्वाइन करो फिलहाल आप भी एक बार कर लो प्लीज म्यूट दी रिमेनिंग पार्टिसिपेंट डॉक्टर वागे सर आर यू देयर कैपेसिटी आई हैड टू टू सम सम फ्यू पीपल्स लीव लीव एंड देन आई कुड जॉइन सो प्लीज बियर विथ मी प्रॉब्लम गेट्स इन फुल स्क्रीन कैन यू कैन यू मेट कैन यू मेट दोज लेडीज Can you meet? Can you can you? Nonsense. Hmm. I'm not going to say anything. We were we have finished the third week, uh, I think, and we were supposed to start the fourth week. again i i think fourth week uh, we is we finished now fifth uh in fifth month panchasit deshu nakhanam abhivanjakata the nail starts growing and garbhopanishad panchame maase prushta vansho bhavati the spinal cord becomes prominent as per rising month maasan to garbha chesta sanchalana adhika the fetal movements becomes uh, prominent significant and the prushtavansha netre cha utpadate asyati the prushtavansha and the netra uh, eyes becomes prominent uh, as per charaka charak sushudan vagbata panchame manaha prati buddha buddhitaraha bhavati uh, it means it can panchame mana prati buddhitaraha bhavati means it can sense the outside uh, voice and outside the uh, movements it can it can predict inside पंचमे मसी गर्भ से मंस शोनित उपचयो भवति अधिकम अन्य व्यव मासे व तस्मात तथा गर्भिणी कार्यम आपतिते विशेषण द फेटल डेवलपमेंट टेक्स प्लेस सिग्निफिकेंटली एंड द मदर बिकम्स लिटिल बिट वीक एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ हर न्यूट्रिशन फेटस गेट्स द न्यूट्रिशन 
as, uh, as you can see, the things are very well mentioned here. And in uh, as per Jyotish Shastra, Majja Antra Charmani, Majja, uh, the brain substance, Antra, the intestine, Charmani Api Panchame. So the skin also gets uh, <clears throat> getting prominent in this uh, month. Uh, as per modern science, fetus becomes 10 inches long, uh, up to one pound, uh, develops muscles and uh, exercises them. That's what uh, these develops muscles and exercises them, which is mentioned in Ayurveda as the Garbha Cheshta Sanchalna Adhika. Fetal moments are called quickening. This Garbha Cheshta Sanchalna is the fetal moments, the quickening. Nails are formed. The, you see here in Quran also, Nakhanam, Abhivanjakata, eyes and eyebrows becomes prominent. The eyes becomes prominent and this is mentioned as Netre Utpadyate Asyatu. So, whatever the fetal development uh, that has been mentioned in fifth month in Ayurveda, the same we found in, find in modern science also. Next of sixth month, as per Purana, Shadaswati Teshu Naka Sandhi Parisputata Upagamya Nabe Sutre Na Pushyamana. This is as per Narat Purana. In Garbo Punishana, Shashte Masi Mukha Nasika Akshi Shotrani Bhavanti. Akshi and Shotra, the years becomes significantly marked. Karani hmm. as per Raisimatsu also Karnasya, Karna Asya Nasika Shashte Gatrani Angani Saptame. Karnasya Nasika Shashte. Karna and Nasika becomes prominent. As per Sushuta, Shashte Buddhihi, Shashte Snayu, Sirasno, as per Ashtang Rudeya. Uh, Snayu Sira Roma, Bala Varana, Nakhatva Cham, and Shashte, uh, as per Charaka, Shashte Masi Garba Se Bala Varana Upchev Bhavati Adhikam Annebo Masi Bha Tasma Tada Garmini Bala Varani Shishin Apadite, and as per uh, uh, Jyotish Shastra, Shashte to Asruk Roma Nakhai Yakrut Cha Shashte, Yakrut becomes functional, the liver becomes functional, the Nakha becomes, the nerves become evident, the uh, hairs become evident, in the Shashta Mas, uh, in the uh, Shashta, uh, sixth month, and the the Lord is Sun, Arki. As per uh, modern science, also, uh, feet has become 12 inches long, weighs 907 gram, finger, toes, prints are visible, opens eyes, responds to sound by moving. In seventh month, Saptame Masse, Jeevan Sanyukta Bhavati means the uh, viable pregnancy can result in the, the in this month. Nakaromadi Sukhmam Yatra Tatraiva Upajayate as per Rai Sangasama and uh, as per our Charak Sushud Vagbata Saptame Sarva Anga Pratyanga Vagaha. All the organs uh, are fully developed. Prabhakta Taraha Saptame Masse Garba Sarva Bhavaihi Apayate Tasmatada Garbini Sarva Kari Klanta Tatama Bhavati. Sarva Sarvanga Sampurna Bhavi Pushati Saptame. As per Jyotishayan, Saptame Chetanta Sambhoti Chetanta. So the viable pregnancy can result in sub, uh, seventh month also, all as all the organs and as the uh, fetal maturation takes place. In eighth month, Trishnashna Swadhanam Ashtame. Uh, Ashtame Masi Sarva Sampurna Bhavati. As per Jyotisha Tatra Ashtame Masi Garbas to Jantu Ashanam Karoti means uh, fetus can uh, swallow the, uh, the amniotic fluid. Matra Bhuktam Pitam Rasadita Sin Abhi Lagna Lagna Nalena Sankramati. As per Charaka Sushuta Ashtame Astir Bhavati Ojaha. This we know very well. Ashtame Masi Garbasha Matru Go Garbasha Mata Rasaranevi Samanevi Muhumu Ojaha Parasparataha Ada Dite. So this uh, the nutrition, the essential part of nutrition goes from fetus to mother, mother to fetus, uh, along with antibodies. Tasmat tada garbani mohu mohu yukta bhavati. So that part we, we know very well. All the parts are fully developed. It, fetus is very developed, uh, very much matured now. And uh, but viability is in danger because the oja, as per Ayurveda, oja is unstable it goes from mother to fetus and from fetus to mother that's why the if the pregnancy occurs uh, de uh, delivery takes place in this month 
then uh, the viability uh, is questionable a little bit. As per modern science, uh, the fetus become 18 inches long, it wakes 2.5 kg, develops further, most internal systems are developed and can see and hear. I think same problem happened again. Why this is happening, I don't know. In nine month, Noam Dashme Ekadash Badashanam, Anyatasmin Jayati, Ato Anyatha Vikari Bhut. Noam Masam Upadaya Prasokalam Iti Ahu Dashmasan Masat Kitavan Prasokala Vikari Kamata Param Kuksho Avastana Garbasya. In Puranas also it is mentioned that Janu Prushti Tatha Nitri Janu Madhech Nasik. Okay, Narikil Falam Yadvat Sankosham Buddhi Gachati. Nariel Kifal Kesaman. <coughs> उसके कोष की कोष की वृद्धि होती पत्यासो वृद्धिम सकशो अधमुख सीता हा दी द फीटल हेड गेट्स डाउन इन द पेल्विक कैविटी तले तो जानु पार्श्वाभ्याम करो नस्तस्य वर्धते अंगुष्ठच उपरी नस्तदो जानु हो अग्रेह थांगोली जानु पुष्टि तथा नेत्रे जानु मध्येच नासिका Speak of, and this is the speech of Parshi Dwayaste Chabahu Jange Bahistite, Ivam Ruti Kramat Ayati Jantu Sri Garbha Samsitaha. The typical position of the fetus uh, at the time of uh, delivery, it is mentioned in the Markande Purana. Uh, as per Jyotish science, this Parsho Prodo Naume Ratija Sroto Bhu Ghatit Purna Deho Garbo. Mm, uh, the fetus is fully developed and is uh, ready to get delivered. And the Adipati Lord is the Chandra moon. This being the astrological science. Thus, we have seen that the fetal development is very well mentioned in Ayurveda as well as the contemporary sciences like Puranas and Jyotish Shastra also. And in the tenth, Navam Dashme Ekadash Dwadashana Annetasmin Jayati Atva Annetha Vikari Goti. So, as well, Ayurveda is of the view that the delivery must take place in either ninth month, tenth month, or eleventh or twelfth month. After that, it becomes abnormal. So, in these 9 to 12 months, delivery must take place. As per Jyotishan, Dashme Garbhasya Prasava Prasuti Bhavati Tatra Suryo Ravihi Adipati. The Lord is Sun. Uh, as per modern science, it has become 7 to 19 inches, wakes 2.5 to 3.5 kg, matures further, they will respond to sweet touch. Lungs, uh, lungs area are almost mature. Uh, now, uh, after this, we are, I am going to show you some uh, beautiful slides. Uh, this is Sundar Kamakshi Temple in uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, which is showing uh, the position of the fetus in the womb, mother's womb. And this uh, temple was built 800 years ago. almost in 11th century. Till 12th century, there was Vikram Shila University in India, famous university. And this is in 11th century. This is incorporated in Sundar Kamakshi, Chinna Kuramburu, Tamil Nadu. The fetal development from this um, month-wise fetal development, you can see this is as per modern science and this has been, we can see this is on the stone ins inscription of this temple. This Kundadam temple, which uh, the slides which I shown you in earlier, earlier, uh, I, I think third or fourth slide, wherein the uh, union of uh, sperm and ovum is shown, and then after the uh, the division of cell is shown, and ultimately the uh, fetus is shown. Now the, there is there is more uh, sculpture showing the delivery in standing position. Now, uh, most of the time we perform in lithotomic position, but most most preferred position is in a standing position. Nowadays, in uh, abroad, this uh, this position is only preferred because of uh, the convenience and as because of the natural gravity, fetus come down very easily. 
thank you thank you very much for your patient listening i hope uh, you got some idea about the fetal development in uh, ayurveda and contemporary sciences and what we what we noticed in this particular lecture is that whatever that is mentioned uh, in modern science now the same thing we find in find the same description in our science also uh, in ayurveda and the contemporary sciences if we club all this Uh, sciences club together ancient sciences the entire description matches with the modern description now the <clears throat> question that arises to my mind and everybody's minds of course uh, is that how they come to know the things how they uh, how these people they must have come to know the fetal development week wise month wise and that question is quite obvious but natural for this purpose you need to have the um, uh, study of indic sciences in our dharma granthas uh, i think uh, the nirnay sindhu and in uh, the kautil artha shastra they have asked to perform the autopsies of the uh, a person who died uh, unnaturally and the person who died At the, at the time, you see, the uh, uh, lot many people's uh, lot many they, they used to perform the medical termination of pregnancy with uh, in a crude way, and uh, and in during those events, mother used to die, and uh, after that, they used to perform the autopsy and autopsy point, uh, and they must have mentioned these autopsy findings. I think. science has gone over the period of time everybody okay, has con con everyone has uh, contributed in that uh, development and in modern science also there how we have come to know about after performing several autopsies that uh, such and such fetal <laughs> development <laughs> otherwise <laughs> otherwise <laughs> in the era where there where there was no sonography no other radiological investigations or no other any technological advancement was there and uh, we have come to know gunjan can you gunjan can you shut your i think uh, uh, प्लीज म्यूट हर Okay. Hello. Uh, let us continue with our discussion. Sir, one speaker. question is with us. Yes. One question is with us. Yeah. Uh, one minute. I will tell you. Uh, there is a question. Does we plan date of the pregnancy according to Jyoti Shastra? I could not get up. What is the question? Does we plan date of the pregnancy according to the Jyoti Shastra? Can we plan? So we can plan or we can plan the uh, delivery after nine after uh, nine months we can plan any date that is suitable to them as per uh, the particular nakshatra falling in okay. the particular uh, date we can plan on that but they all we if the labor starts all of a sudden then we cannot plan anything but uh, yes. after nine months if the labor pain doesn't start then we can plan on any day of our choice okay okay. i think i was saying something i uh, i forgot to uh, to tell uh, some i i was exploring on some important aspect of uh, yes sir of all these things the wonderful uh, description uh, stone inscriptions and the entire fetal development uh, inscripted on the stones 
uh, and the uh, and we have seen the very scientific description of all those things in our our science also uh, i think i was telling about the art of uh, how the, how these people they come to know about it without uh, the technological advances and the investigations like sonography so that's only way possible uh, was of the autopsy yes so i think th uh, i thank you very much uh, if we have any questions please uh, ask them to uh, put them in the chat box because i am losing my connection there is no uh, charge left in my uh, laptop and the current is uh, not available since morning whatever what uh, but fortunately we have completed our lecture i will uh, take the take them in the uh, chat box i will try to join once again uh, till the uh, our sachin kedikar sir uh, finishes okay. i will join from my mobile only uh, no problem okay sir sir thank you so much sir thank you so much so now we will um, for the continue the second session now i invite today's second guest speaker dr sachin khedikar sir before starting the lecture i would like to introduce dr sachin khedikar sir so uh, sachin khedikar sir is with us uh, he has completed his undergraduation from the maharashtra and obtained md ayurved shari rachna from government ayurved college nag nanded and pursuing phd in rachna shari at datta megi institute of medical sciences vardha presently working as a professor and uh, head rachna shari and additional responsibility of dean academics academics shri sai institute of ayurved research and medicine bhopal he has 14 years teaching experiences and 7 years pg teaching experience many scholar completed their post graduation under his guidance he has filled two patent in ayurved out of which one is from the shari rachna he has handled two university funded research project till now he has got 10 awards in ayurved field he has 25 international and national publications in peer reviewed journal in his credit he had wrote three chapters in book of the ayurved one book of research methodology under publication he is working as a reviewer and sub editor in four journals he has honored as a chair person in more than 15 international and national conferences he was called as a guest speaker and keynote speaker in 10 conferences national and webinars uh, national webinars he had presented more than 25 research paper in international and national conferences he had work at various administrative proposition in deem university vardha work as a principal and professor in shri oh nazar college surat convener azadi ka amrut mohsar crm college bhopal so with this now may i invite dr sachin khedkar sir to talk on the topic clinical application of the kala shari in the ayurveda so uh, sachin khedkar sir is with us uh, sir please ट्रूली नॉलेजेबल एंड वेरी एक्सलंट लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक Uh, that is concerned with our specialty rachna sharir and basically i am also highly impressed with your collection of all the datas because some things uh, we are uh, also new for me related to our topic so that is uh, very much appreciable sir thank you sir thank you so, i can you welcome sir sir uh, now i come to a topic of my today's presentation sir is my screen is visible yes sir your screen is visible okay okay so uh, without wasting much time uh, i will come to the topic Uh, today's topic of my webinar is clinical application of kala sharir in ayurved 
uh, basically kalashari when we study in uh, ug level or in post graduation level most of times we think of only structural entity so in this presentation or in this lecture i will try how this uh, structural entity or this structure of kalashari can be clinically correlated can be practiced how uh, this is important like other structures of the body this is the more motive of this lecture so coming to the highlights of this our presentation in this presentation we will go through this outline that is general description related to kala nature of kala kala utpatti types of kala then description of each kala then applied aspect of each kala so in this way we will study one by one because i think the audience is mixed there may be the some undergraduate students or some new students and there may be some teachers or some experts of our ayurveda field so i have put all the views related to this kala in this presentation now kala what is kala uh, there are seven kalas in our body and these are nothing but the interface in between the dhatu and ashaya it is rightly said by acharya sushruta that is kala sap khalvapi sapta sambhavanti dhatva shayantar maryada it means that there are the certain limiting membranes between the two entities there are two entities dhatu and ashaya in between dhatu and ashaya there are certain membranes or there are certain coverings and these coverings or membranes are known as the kala now this kala for understanding the entire aspect of this kala we have to go for the some meaning related to kala if we go into the dictionaries of ayurveda we find that there are certain meanings related to kala there are n number of meanings related to kala but when we think about this uh, kala in rachna sharir so we have to uh, demarcate or we have to shortlist certain meanings which are of our uh, importance so there are three meanings which can be of our relevance related to kalash kala sharir this may be uh, membrane then parts of the body and qualities these are the three meanings which are very much relevant with uh, our kala sharir uh, you can see in this uh, dallana also quoted that anye tu kala shabdam anga pratyanga ashvam mananti means this word kala Uh, specifically when comes in context of the sharir then it is related with the uh, certain uh, portion or certain uh, structure of our body in this regard acharya dallana also clarified that what is the uh, literal meaning of this kala dhatva shayantar maryada dadati iti dhatvo ratavaksha mansadaya kapa pitta purushanye api prakrutani svakarmana dadati धातवा तेषाम आशया अवस्थान प्रदेशः धातवाशया तेषाम अंतरेषु मर्यादा सीमा भूता इत्यर्थ मींस दैट देयर आर सर्टेन एंटिटीज इन आवर बॉडी अदर देन रस रक्त मांस में द देयर आर सम अदर एंटिटीज दैट मे बी द पुरेश पित्त और सम कफ एंड दीस एंटिटीज व्हेन परफॉर्म नेचुरल फंक्शंस इन आवर बॉडी देन दे आर कॉल्ड एज द धातु एंड फॉर Uh, storage or for holding such dhatus there are certain ashayas and the space in between these uh, cavities and the dhatus is known as this kala uh, for this i have put one example of the raktadhara kala in here uh, if we uh, correlate this raktadhara kala with the modern anatomical structures then we can correlate with this endothelial linings of the blood vessels and the sinusoids of the liver and the spleen if we understand the structure of this blood vessel it may be the larger blood vessel or the capillaries then we can see that in the central core there will be the storage or the holding of blood entity and uh, there will be the covering of the blood vessels and in between this dhatu 
and their ashe there will be certain limiting membranes and this limiting membranes or this coverings between this dhatu and ashe it can be known as the kala in this context this endothelium of this blood vessel can be said as a raktadhara kala now there is the nature of kala in context of nature of kala they have mentioned specifically that ethahi sar kashteshu chiddamane shu drushyate tatha dhaturi maseshu chiddamane shu drushyate snayu bhischa pratishannan santatascha jarayunam sleshmana veshtatas chapi kala bhagas pitanku because when we understand this kala as we know twacha is also one of the covering of our body similarly kala is also the covering up our body but what is the difference in between the twacha and kala when we go into the details we know that twacha is the outer covering of the body in contrast kala is the inner covering of our body so for that understanding uh, this uh, quotation or this simile uh, has been given in the sushrut that when we have to identify the core of the wood piece we have to expose the outer layer similarly when we have to identify the kala in our body we will have to go in the deeper structures of the body then we will be able to understand what is the kala or what are the uh, structure of kala or uh, the details regarding the kala can be only possible by uh, dissection of the body this is the uh, theme of this shloka and they have already mentioned that kalas are having the three type of structures that may be snayu or that may be composed of jarayu or that may be composed of sleshma so these three types of structures uh, they have mentioned specifically for the uh, composition of this kala this can be said as the upadan karan of kala uh, this is the simile uh, as we can uh, i have put two figures here the transverse section of this uh, thigh region and the transverse section of the wood tree so see when we heart of the wood can be seen after cutting that particular part similarly uh, the inner dhatu in this context dhatu means the bone bone is visible by uh, dissecting the superficial uh, muscles or this uh, skin and other structures of the body so similarly when we have to identify kala in our body we have to go into the deeper structures of our body then uh, this is the comparison between the kala and the twacha uh, kala are the inner coverings of the body uh, they are said the avyakta then twacha are the external coverings in comparison to twacha kala are the thin and limited to certain organs of the body tanu and swalpa and the uh, skin is or twacha is the thick and extensive this is sarva sharir vyapini this is the basic difference between the twacha and kala uh, coming to the utpatti of the kala when we come to the उत्पत्ति ऑफ कला दैट इज एस्तु धात्वा शयांतरेशु क्लेदो अवतिष्ठते स यथार्थ उष्मना विपक्व स्नायु श्लेष्म जरायु छन्न काष्टे व सारो धातु सार शेषो रस रस शेषोल्पत्वात कला सद्य अ इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कला दे हैव मेंशन दैट स्पेशली अष्टांग संग्रह Kleda, which lies between the dhatu and ashya, undergoes pachan due to its own heat produced during the dhatu process, and it forms the kala. So the uh, re remnants of the kala, which lies in between this dhatu and ashya, that transform into the kala. This is the uh, thought, or this is the thought process of the Ayurveda regarding the formation of kala. uh for understanding of this kleda uh, we can put the example of this mucous membrane uh, of the git gi tract mucous membrane can be one example for the understanding of the this kleda factor uh, how this kleda factor can be understand when we see that uh, 
this mucous membrane of the GIT or the lamina propria, which is present in this uh, mucous membrane, uh, we see that uh, the chemical analysis or biochemical analysis of this mucous membrane shows that the water content is around 90%. Okay, so uh, this 90% of water content can be understood in context of this cleda, which is described in Ayurveda. Now coming to the another uh, dimension of this uh, embryological concept of Kala, as we know, the human body consists of the four types of tissue, mostly epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. As we know, this kala are the limiting membranes or lining membranes on the cavities of the body or certain body cavities. So, in this four types, this epithelial tissue uh, can be the kala. So, there may be the external cavity or the internal surface of the body. This epithelium is the covering membrane. Now, as you know, epithelia are up again having uh, three, four types, epithelia which are derived from the ectoderm, epithelia which are derived from the mesoderm, epithelia derived from the endoderm. Apart from that, there are certain mesenchymal cells or mesenchyme. Mesenchyme is in the early embryonic uh, aggregation of certain cells. They are having uh, the cells as well as the uh, other other liquid entity is also present the, in this uh, mesenchyme because epithelium are steeped to particular surface, but this mesenchyme can travel from one part of the body to the other part of the body. So all this mesenchyme and this epithelia from all the three germ layers are also important. And when we go into the detail of this, all these things, we can see that this seven colors which are described in Ayurveda, uh, this correlation regarding this, all these seven color is uh, given in some books. Uh, for example, in B.J. Ghanikar, which is a commentary written on the Sushrut Samhita, we can see these are the certain correlations they have quoted uh, in context of the kala uh, with the anatomical structures. Uh, and their embryological derivations, when we compare, then we can see that mostly the uh, epithelium which is derived from the mesothelium or epithelium which is derived from the endothelium. Uh, this can be the originating factor for the formation of the these seven colors which are mentioned in our Ayurvedic texts. Uh, in short, when we go to the embryology or the Utpati of the Kala, we can conclude that that Kleda is said to be the originating factor for the Kala according to many Asharyas and Kala is found from the very little quantity of the Rasa and essence of the Dhatu. The Rasa Seshulpatvata, uh, it is the quotation and Kala described in Ayurveda can be categorized as the epithelium, mesothelium or endothelium covering of the mostly derived from mesoderm or the endodermal origin. Means uh, these are the uh, coverings or epithelium or mesothelium, which are mostly derived from the me uh, mesoderm and the endoderm. So this is difference between this kala and twacha. Now coming to the uh, types of kala. Types of kala, uh, we can see that there are uh, Sushrut, Vagbhat, Sharandar and Bhavprakash. Uh, when we come to the Sharir Sthan, we just first follow the Acharya Sushruta. Uh, Acharya Sushruta has said that Mansa Dharakala, Rakta Dharakala, Medu Dharakala, Slishma Dharakala, Purish Dharakala, Pitta Dharakala and Shukra Dharakala. These seven Kalas are described in Ayurveda. And apart from this, uh, uh, many Acharyas have having the similar type, seven number of Kala, but there are certain difference in the nomenclature. Apart from that, these seven colors are uh, common all in all the texts. When come to the classification of this color, we can classify color in two grounds. That is the Upadan Karan. Upadan Karan is the manufacturing uh, portion or the uh, embryological factor which helps in the formation of this color. That is the Snayu Jarayu or 
schlesma that can be correlated with the fibrous membrane serous membrane and the mucus mu mucus membrane in the body and when we come to the functional classification of the kala we can classify into these four types of categories because when we uh, in later portion of this presentation we will see all these uh, types so there is the dharan shoshan stravan and vivechan mostly all the functions which are described in text that can be categorized in these four types of categories so now coming this was all about the general just introduction or the overview of the kala what we see in our textbooks uh, but today's now core topic is the clinical application of these kalas in our uh, ayurveda practice or ayurvedic perspective this is the main or core topic of the kala so for that uh, perspective i have added all the things the contemporary or modern view as well as the ayurvedic view of the kala how we have to understand or how we have to think about the kala when we think of the clinical applications of the kala so i have quoted certain examples of this kala one is the structural abnormality or the structural pathology in general uh, you know that whenever there is with the inflammation or lesion in the membrane in that time the structural pathology may be seen uh, the best example of this is the pear patches in the typhoid fever uh, most of the you must be knowing there are the pear patches usually they are present or the lymphoid follicles are present in the small intestine mostly they are present in the ileum and the larger lymphatic uh, follicles which are present in the small intestine are known as the pear patches okay and they are inflamed in the disease known as the typhoid fever this uh, again the kala uh, comes under the pitta dhara kala and this pitta dhara kala may be disturbed because of the certain type of disease and when such type of pathology is takes place uh, we can say that this is a structural type of deformity takes place in case of the kala when we come to the functional category of or pathology of the kala uh, we can see that accumulation disorders like ascites in ascites what happens uh, only in abdomen there is the free fluid which is helpful for the movements of the abdominal viscerals but due to deformity in the certain other structures the permeability of the uh, portal vein or the other structure disturbs and because of that what happens there is the accumulation of the fluid takes place in case of the ascites and this type of pathology can be considered as the functional pathology in the kala then altered permeability you know if you know the process of inflammation you can understand that whenever there will be the inflammation at particular site then the permeability and the blood vessels and the capillaries will be altered and this will ultimately result in the inflammation and this uh, view or this perspective can also be understand as a pathological uh, part of this kala again coming to the uh, another dimension of this kala if internal linings means there are four uh, categories of uh, stroto drushti uh, which are uh, considered in ayurveda that is ati pravruti sang sira granthi or vimarga gaman such type of things al also can be happen in case of the kala also that is ati pravruti sang vibandha swelling leading to the megaly because of this if there is the ati pravruti due to uh, disturbance in the kala definitely it will reach into the swellings or the megaly of that particular part and this is the functional type of deformity then sira granthi in sira granthi what will be happen obstructive or swelling type of pathology will be there and the formation of nodules in that uh, in that case we will see that there is the structural as well as the functional pathology will be seen and it can be seen in the external layer also internal lining and external layer when come to this we can see that vimarga gaman 
Vimarga Gaman means displace of body fluids or tissues, means any tissue normally present in that particular site or which is flowing from particular pathway. And if that pathway is disturbed and it goes into the another pathway, then this is known as the Vimarga Gaman type of pathology. For example, urine. Urine, as you know, the root of the urine is formed in the kidney. It's, uh, Mm, transported through the ureters to the urinary bladder and from urethra it is dispensed uh, outside our body or excreted of our outside body. In that total course of this urine formation, if there is a certain pathology or injury that uh, may pass urine into the out of the root. And such like, am, I, am I audible? <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir you, are you are audible. Okay, okay. There is certain disturbance in the noise. Okay. So, in such type of case, we can see that uh, this is the Vimarga Gaman type of pathology, and this Vimarga Gaman may be takes place because of the disturbance or the damage to that particular color uh, carrying that particular entity. Now, in again more examples that is the Vimarga Gaman altered permeability of the color we see as we see in the Abhishanda. It is the disease of the eye in that the membrane is disturbed. Again, more examples fatty liver or calcification at the varite site. These are all the examples of the Vimarga Gaman type of pathology which can be takes place in case of the color. Now coming to the uh, details of the particular color and their applied uh, aspects. Uh, first color which is described in Ayurveda is the uh, Mansadhara Kala, Tasam Prathama Mansadhara Naam Yesya Manse Siras Nayu Dhamani Stotasam Pratanam Bhavati. Uh, the, as you know, Mansadhara Kala is the first color. And what is the role of this color according to Ayurveda? The role of this color is to provide the pathway for the Sira, Snayu, Dhamani or Strotas and their branches. If Sira, Snayu, Dhamani, Strotas and their branches, uh, they are providing the pathway through this Mansadhara Kala. This is the role of Mansadhara Kala according to Ayurveda, which is said according to Acharya Shushruta. And when we uh, go to the uh, correlation of this Mansadhara Kala, uh, we can correlate this Mansadhara Kala with the deep fascia which is present in our body. And uh, as we know, uh, when we uh, correlate or we study this deep fascia in uh, early embryonic life or with fetus, uh, we have seen that when there is the development of the human deep fascia, in case of the fetus, uh, yeah, it is, uh, we have seen that there is the presence of TC4F fibroblast. TCO4 fibroblast are seen present in the developing deep fascia of the human embryo. And this is having the major role in the muscle morphogenesis. Okay, this is one dimension or one type, part of this uh, uh, deep fascia. Apart from this, this deep fascia also provide, uh, you can see in the box which is uh, marked here, blood vessel and nerve develop parallel to it and occasionally cross it from the deep to the superficial planes. It indicates that this uh, super uh, deep fascia which is the covering of the muscles is providing the passage for the transport of these nerves and blood vessels to the muscles and again having the certain roles in the muscle morphogenesis. We will go again into the detail of this, this deep fascia, what is deep fascia? Deep fascia is again having the three layers. This is the epimyceum, perimyceum and endomyceum. All these are coverings, means epimyceum covers the entire muscle, then perimyceum covers the fasciculus, muscle fasciculus and the Fine septa endomyceum again covers the each muscle fiber. So this is the bifurcation of deep fascia and all these structures again provide 
means through all these connective tissue septa that is epimysium perimysium and endomysium arterioles capillaries venules lymphatics and nerves travels to reach each muscle fibers so this is clearly mentioned in the modern uh, anatomical literature and what uh, it mentioned in our ayurvedic text that is tasam prathama mans dhara esya mansi sira snayu dhamani strotasam pratanam bhavati so it is very clearly mentioned in ayurvedic literature and which we see in modern literature also so this uh, uh, mans dhara kala is comparable with the deep fascia of the uh, modern anatomical structure apart from that we will come to the clinical perspective of this mans dhara kala as you know it is having the holding role or it is having the uh, compactness or to maintain the compactness of body because it also uh, not not only holding the muscle tissue but it also provide the pathway for this sira snayu and nerves so uh, compactness or the body integrity is also maintained by this uh, deep fascia and any deformity related to this shaithilyata or any deformity which uh, related to the looseness of this tissue may be seen and that may uh, depending upon the uh, type of pathology the shaithilya may be a different type that is if kapha shaithilya is there then there may be the uh, formation of prameha pitta shaithilya is seen in case of the pandu the shithilata vyadhi is seen in the sira vikruti as you know the uh, sira vikruti varicosity is also seen in case of some cases uh, dhamani shaithilyam is uh, seen there so uh, when we correlate uh, or compare this uh, mansdhara kala in modern perspective or in ayurvedic perspective this shithilata type of diseases can be considered uh in context of this mans dhara kala and when we uh work on such type of disease then we have to think of this mans dhara kala again when uh, we have compared this mans dhara kala with the deep fascia and what are the diseases seen uh, because of the dysfunction of the um, deep fascia so dysfunction involving the alteration in the mechanical coordination proprioception balance myofascial pain and cramps are most related to the deep fascia and epimysium uh, again uh, this type of pathology or this type of clinical conditions also can be compared as a part of the mans dhara kala as mans dhara kala is truly comparable with this deep fascia now coming to the next kala this is the dvitiya rakta dhara kala द्वितीय रक्तधरा नाम मनसाभ्यता तस्य सोनित विशेष तीरासु इकृत प्लीहोश्चति सो रक्तधरा कला आई विल नॉट गो इन टू द डिटेल ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी कला बिकॉज माय मोन मेन फोकस इज ऑन द क्लिनिकल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस कला सो आई विल बी मोर फोकस ऑन दिस क्लिनिकल पर्स्पेक्टिव ऑफ द ईच कला so this raktadhara kala which is described in ayurveda is comparable with the endothelial lining of the blood vessel and sinuses found in the liver and the spleen and this endothelium is separated from the surrounding outer layers of the basal lamina as uh, this figure you have already seen in the previous slide uh, again go into the details of this uh, kala because these are the finest branches of the vascular tree are the capillaries and the sinusoids this wall consists of endothelial cells and basal lamina together with few scattered but functionally important pericytes endothelium is now recognized as a complex endocrine organ responsible for a variety of physiological processes vital for the vascular hemostasis and this includes the regulation of vascular tone luminal diameter and blood flow hemostasis thrombolysis platelet and leukocyte vessel wall interaction the regulation of the vascular permeability tissue growth and remodeler in short what we can say what is raktadhara kala raktadhara kala is comparable with the endothelial lining of the blood vessels and the capillaries and what is the role the role of this endothelial linings is not limited up to the holdings or the regulation of this blood 
apart from that it is having the certain major role it is uh, just like the complex endocrine organ it works just like the complex endocrine organ it, it having the n number of roles in the maintenance of this blood flow in our body and if this kala is vitiated or if there is the deformity in this kala or is there is the problem in the endothelial cells then what will happen definitely problems in this endothelial will leads to the certain problems in our body so what may be the problems in this body uh, before going to this we will come to the ayurvedic perspective of this raktadhara kala that is the pranah shunitam hinu vartate means samare sharir mein pran ya in the prana or the liveliness in our body is because of the shunit or because of the blood so blood is very important factor of our body and the kala which uh, helps in the regulation of this blood is equally important so this is again one important dimension apart from that this is jivana pranavah srotas mahastrotas marma these are the things which are related with this blood when we go for the chikitsa related to this blood or this uh, uh, kala or membrane related to with this uh, blood that can be the rakta pitta hari kriya rakta mokshana virechana uh, if we go for the drugs drugs related to rakta dhara kala when we have to think of the rakta pachak rakta pachak as you know patol sariva musta patha kukki Uh, there are certain rasaushadis are so they are swarna makshi tapyadi loha nityanandaras arogya vardini these are the drugs are either related with the rakta or rakta dhara kala so when we uh, think of the any disease which may be because of the deformity in the rakta dhara kala when we, uh, we have to think of this dimensions uh, while treating such cases Uh, now coming to the modern perspective related to raktadhara kala is the endothelium diseases what are the endothelium diseases alteration of the endothelial cells and vasculature is directly involved in peripheral vascular disease stroke heart disease diabetes insulin resistance chronic kidney failure tumor growth metastasis venous thrombosis and severe viral infectious diseases these are all related with the alteration because of the endothelial cells so how you can understand this endothelial cells or raktadhara kala which is mentioned in ayurveda is very important so whenever any type of cases or any type of patients come to us or when such type of patients Uh, attend our OPDs or IPDs. At that time, we have to think about this color dimension. Uh, coming to the next color, third color is the Medodhara color. Uh, as you know, Trutiyo Medodhara naam Medohi sarva bhuta naam udarastha manvastha shishu mahatsu samajja bhavati. Uh, as you know, uh, Med is present in the abdomen of all animals as well as in the anvasti. there is the quotation given by this acharya shushruta means uh, in context of medodhara kala they have not mentioned about the kala they have mentioned that med is present in the abdomen of all animals or uh, anvasti uh, there are few more quotations of other textbooks that is the medo asna mudare tasya mudare anvasti shushya saraktam bhavati stulasti shushya majja bhavan bhavatyu udare anvasti shushya means uh, in short most of the acharyas or most of the text mentioned that the meda uh, means anvasti or udar these are the two locations related to meda and they are correlated with the medo dharakala so but because of uh, med is present in all over the body uh, and in other sites also not only in the udara it is also present in the many other parts of the body so in that uh, context uh, we have to understand how this kala 
when we come to the sequence of the kala you can see that mansa dhara rakta dhara medha dhara shleshma dhara purish dhara pitta dhara or shukra dhara and we come to the sequence of the dhatu formation we know that rasa rakta mansa medha asti majja and shukra if we compare these two things or to this table we can understand that these kalas are not described in the formation or in the sequence of dhatu formation rather than they have described from superficial to the deeper portion of the body means the kala while dissection or while shava vichedan when first kala if they have seen that may be the mans dhara kala and that's why they have described the mans dhara kala first then they may have seen the rakta dhara kala then they have described the rakta dhara kala so such type of uh, prediction or such type of uh, conclusion may be come from this <coughs> table uh, so what is the clinical uh, perspective of this medodhara kala because uh, medodhara kala uh, can be compared with the uh, many structures because uh, this is said in context of the udara uh, in udara if you know there is the superficial fascia is also there if there is the uh, peritoneum is there peritoneal folds also contain the fats then retroperion peritoneal faces also spaces also contain the adipose tissue so there are many things which are in correlation with the adipose tissue present in the abdominal part. Uh, so not going into the controversy or the uh, different statements related to this we will only focus on the med or the medodhara kala uh, if we compare this med with modern anatomical structure it is comparable with the adipose tissue of the body uh, adipose tissue uh, we if you see it is located in the subcutaneous fat the visceral fat is also there marrow fat is the, also there muscular fat is also there breast fat is also there means there are the many fat components which are present in the body and these adipose depots in different parts of our body having the different biochemical profile okay this uh, means not necessary adipose tissue of every part will having the uh, every, such similar type of activity it is having the uh, different type of activity or biochemical part depending upon the its sites but in general circumstances or under normal circumstances what is the role uh, under normal condition it provides feedback for the hunger and diet of the brain okay this is the in general uh, part of the uh, use of this meda in our body uh, it is not only the simple connective tissue it is having the many role in our body then coming to the visceral fat uh, first we have seen the adipose adipose tissue but in adipose tissue also having the visceral fat is a different entity uh, this is very important because this visceral fat is present in the abdomen and medudhara kala is also described in relation with the abdomen so that's why the study of this visceral fat is also very important what is visceral fat visceral fat is located inside the abdominal cavity it is packed between the organs just like the stomach liver intestine kidneys visceral fat is different from the subcutaneous and the intramuscular fat intramuscular fat and subcutaneous fat is different from the visceral fat then fat in the abdomen is mostly visceral and semicolon means jo bhi fat hota hai khas kar abdomen mein wo kaisa hota hai it is visceral fat jyada hota hai uska semi fluid bhi hota hai to ye thoda sa different the different entity of uh, this uh, meda is seen our visceral fat is seen in this uh, context with uh, comparison with the another fat and if you remember acharya charkasya charya had said the anjali praman of the many dhatus and med is again one of the them and this uh, liquid entity related to this fat is also important for understanding of this meda now this visceral fat is composed of the several adipose depots 
okay visceral fat is again having also certain other mesenteric fat epidermal white adipose tissue peripheral depots and omental uh, fat is also there so this visceral fat is again having uh, four types of entities and what is the role of visceral fat in our body uh, visceral fat is uh, quietly different from the normal fat or normal adipose tissues of our body that carries the more blood flow uh, more receptors for the hormones visceral fat cells are also more biologically active they also produce the hormone and other substances just like the cytokine in the covid situation you must be knowing the cytokine swarms uh, this is again related with the cytokines association of visceral fat and higher levels of the total cholesterol c if you see in the routine practice you must if you go on to the blood analysis of the patient uh, you can see that if patient is seeing slim trim not that much uh, obese uh, and if you go for the blood analysis or lipid profile of that particular patient he must be having the disturbed lipid profile and if a person is seeing very healthy or fatty but if you uh, take uh, the lipid profile or compare the lipid profile of that person the lipid profile of that person may be normal at normal level so this uh, type of difference we see why because this uh, visceral fat is more important for the pathological or treatment point of view Uh, in research study it is established that there is the association of this visceral fat and higher level of total cholesterol again this visceral fat is a complex organ and having the multifaceted function which are endocrine and as well as the immune system they are also related with the immune system so med is not only the uh, lipan or this having the the uh, connective tissue but it is having the various role in our body again this adipocytes respond to the bacterial and viral antigens so in short uh, i want to say that uh, this med or this medodhara kala or this visceral fat is having a very important role in our body and uh, it is equally important Uh, for the treatment point of view so whenever we think of this medodhara kala or the med we have to think of this visceral fat means the things that can be modify the levels of visceral fat or that can uh, regulate the function of this uh, visceral fat that we have to think of then anusti sarakta med vata rakta shunti gudi chikut ki these are certain medicines which can be used for the treatment of this med associated conditions uh this has uh, one dimensions of the kala uh, till now we have seen that mean there are the certain types of kala they are having certain role in the body in if uh, the role of that particular kala is disturbed or because of certain uh, reason of uh, or pathology in our body if that particular uh, function get disturbed then what may happen so kalas are not only in the beginning of the session i have said that these are not only the interface or the limiting membranes between the two entities but they are having the certain roles or certain function or certain physiology in our body so this kala perform some vital functions of our body any deformity or its malfunction will leads to certain type of pathology doshas moving across the body uh, suitable environment Uh, kala also can be the site of pathology then when kala performs the normal functions they will perform the physiology and if when it be unable uh, perform physiology it will lead to certain type of disease it may be of the low severity or it may be of the of high severity but uh, if there is the malfunction of the kala then definitely this malfunction of the kala will lead to the some type of pathology so we will see the examples of uh, kalas if they perform or they the malfunction takes place in this case if you see that what is the fourth kala fourth kala is the chaturthi shleshmadhara nama sarva sandishu pram bhutam bhavati 
स्नेहा भक्ति यता हिक्से चक्रम साधु प्रवर्तते संदया साधु वर्तते संश्लिष्टा श्लेष्मनास्तका दिस इज द रोल ऑफ श्लेष्मधरा कला इन अवर बॉडी व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ श्लेष्मधरा कला श्लेष्मा कला फैसिलिटेट द जॉइंट मूवमेंट्स साउंड फ्रिक्शन हीट जनरेशन इटीसी आर प्रिवेंटेड ड्यूरिंग द मूवमेंट ऑफ द जॉइंट सो दिस इज द रोल ऑफ द कला एंड इफ यू जस्ट इमेजिन इफ दिस फंक्शन ऑफ दिस श्लेष्मधरा कला डिस्टर्ब संदया साधु वर्तनते संश्लिष्टा श्लेष्मना स्तथा जो श्लेष्मा होता है ऑफ द श्लेष्मा विच इज प्रेजेंट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस श्लेष्मधरा कला इज हेल्प फॉर द स्मूथ मूवमेंट ऑफ द जॉइंट्स इफ the role of this kala or this leshma is disturbed what will happen this uh, the friction the sound the degeneration all these things will be happen because they are prevented by the presence of this leshma and if the leshma is not properly functioning then this this will be happens and the joint disorders like the osteoarthritis or same any diseases may be occur because of the disturbance of this kala and for this treatment as you know the janubasti is one of the important uh, remedy we mostly do in panchkarma uh, that is the in case of the knee joint or osteoarthritis is there if we perform the janubasti then it may be helpful for the proper functioning of the shleshma dhara kala and definitely it will then have then helps for the free movements of the joints then it may be helpful for the uh, then again synovitis synovitis is a uh, condition uh, that may be seen in case of the gout uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, again it may be in lupus erythematous this condition may be seen uh, the pathology of this shleshmadhara kala may be of the kshaya type ruddhi type means it may be atrophy or hypertrophy atrophy in case of the osteoarthritis and if in case of the diseases like the Uh, rheumatoid arthritis or this uh, gout or some other there may be the hypertrophy or there may be the inflammation type of pathology may be takes place in this shleshma dhara kala uh there are some other medicines which are available sandhaniya gan this sandhaniya gan can be we use for the diseases related to joint or diseases related to the this shleshmadhara kala uh, if you go to the phalashruti of this gandha tel it is said that it is useful in the most of the arthritic disorders so it can be used in the joint and associated disorders so uh, this gandha tel or this sandhaniya gan janu basti these are certain remedies which can be thing of this shleshmadhara kala and it may be related with the diseases related to this shleshmadhara kala then coming to the next kala this is the panchami purushthara nama ya antakoshte malam abhivibhajate pakvashayastha uh, undukastham vibhajate malam maladhara kala what is the role of this purushdhara kala undukastham vibhajate malam maladhara kala means to store the uh, feces and to uh, sarakitta vibhajan this is the main role of this kala so serves to separate the fecal refuse in the pakwashe from other ingested matter the structures of the large intestine is adapted for the storage of matter reaching it from the small intestine and the epithelium is absorptive columnar but villi are absent uh, when we compare this purishdhara kala we can compare uh, this purishdhara kala with the mucus membrane or the epithelium which is present right from the cecum up to the sigmoid colon or sigmoid colon up to the rectum we can say so this is uh, nothing but the role of this uh, purishadhara kala and when we compare this purishadhara kala with the colon then what is the role of colon uh, there are many role of colon that is lubrication of the feces by the mucus then absorption of the water salt and other solutes bacterial flora of the colon synthesizes the vitamin b see this is very important as you know in many patients we see the uh, vitamin b deficiency b12 deficiency nowadays it is very common 
what may be the reason because of the unhealthy our diet light diet or lifestyle when we eat the unhealthy food or not nutritious diet properly in our body what will happen the intestinal flora may get disturbed and if intestinal flora this bacterial flora of the colon disturb then definitely the vitamin b will not be synthesized in the proper quantity and if proper quantity uh, is not uh, produced then definitely there will be the deficiency of such factors in our body so for that purpose also this kala or the membrane associated with this is also very important again another role of this kala membrane is mucoid secretion of colon is rich in antibodies of iga group which protect it from the invasion of microorganisms then microvilla abacal ducts of some columnar cells or as the sensory function in short what i want to say is that what is the role of kala role of the kala is not only to hold or not only to separate this particular entities in this our body apart from this holding or apart from this separation they are having the many more roles in our body and if this any type of entity or any type of role get disturbs what will definitely happen definitely the malfunction will be happen and depending upon the malfunctioning of that particular kala the disease may occur so whenever such type of cases or patients come to us then definitely we have as a ayurvedic uh, physician we have to think up all these uh, aspects then if the failure of this kala uh, in text plus what may happen the constipation may occur chronic diarrhea colitis ibs crohn's disease such type of disease may occur in this purish dhara kala another more dimension that is inclusive of purish and mutra malavruddha ya pravartante visheshe udrani tu mala sanchiti pradhan rup means if there are the uh, um, toxins or the mala are present in our body or they are deposited in our body then certain type of disease may be occur because of this purish dhara kala or mala dhara kala because purish dhara kala is also known as the mala dhara kala and if there is the malfunctioning of the purish dhara kala what will happen that there may be the deposition of the mala in our body and if this disorder deposition occurs there may be the diseases like the udara in case of udarva uh, we uh, the recommended remedy is the gandharva harit ki if the kushta type of pathology is occurs then danti ghrit manibhadra avleha these are the medicines which we can prescribe in case of the kushta if kidney failure is there because kidney is excreting the urine then we recommend the kansha harit ki if krumi roga is there then bidanga harit then such type of things we give as a remedies for the diseases related to the deposition of mala in our body coming to the uh, next that is the aiva kala purish dhara saivasti dhariti panchame astenu praveshane pravishati te virudha the fifth purush dhara kala is also known as the asti dhara kala it is written in the kalpasthan of the shushruta Uh, there are in number of articles they point out that the there is the definite correlation of this uh, uh, bowels or mucous membrane of the intestine with the uh, osteoporosis or the bone growth or the bone deposition so there are uh, certain articles which we can see in this slide then what is the role of the asti in our body astini deha dharana majja pushtischa kurvanti देह धारण एंड मज्जा पुष्टि दीज आर द मेन रोल ऑफ अस्थि इन अवर बॉडी एंड बीड बलम ही कस्य बलम इट इज कोटेड इन द राजेक्ष्मा सो दीज आर द मीन्स दीज थिंग्स विच आर कम इन कंटेक्स्ट ऑफ द पुरिश धरा कला सैव अस्थि धरा कला इस यही कोरिलेशन समझने के लिए हमें ये दो चीजें जानना जरूरी है कि धारण कर्म अस्थि में भी कॉमन है और धारण पुरुष के माध्यम से भी धारण होता है शरीर में इसलिए पुरुष और अस्थि को कंपेयर किया गया है इन दिस कंटेक्स्ट 
there are certain medicines which can be prescribed in the diseases related with the bones. Next kala is the pitta dhara kala, sasti pitta dhara. Uh, ya chatur vidha manapanam bukta mama shayata prachitam papa shayapasthitam dhariyati tad jiriyati yatha kalam sushitam pitta teja saha. So what is the main role of this kala? Sixth kala is the pitta dhara kala and with the influence of this kala, this the uh, digestion of this uh, ingested food it takes place with the help of pitta or agni which is present in this kala this is the major role of this uh, pitta dhara kala sushruta what is sushruta stated that it is the pakva amashay madhyastha and pitta dhara kala is mostly present in the small intestine Agni is considered to be the strength of Grahani and Grahani is the arborist of the Agni. Both the things are associated with each other. Agni and Grahani both are uh, uh, interrelated with each other. If there is the vitiation of Agni, definitely Grahani will be vitiated. And if there is the vitiation of the Grahani, definitely the Agni will be vitiated. So both things are interrelated with each other. So Pitta Kala is the Again, important kala in our body because uh, Acharya Vaghvata said that whatever the diseases in our body takes place, these are because of the mandagni. If agni is disturbed, then definitely the body is disturbed and many diseases will be occur. So, in that perspective, this pitta dhara kala is also very important kala of our body and dusti hap agni causes the dusti hap grahani. This pitta dhara kala holds food and helps in its digestion with the head of Pitta Rupi Agni. What are the uh, things which are uh, possible or which can be uh, acquired with the help of this uh, uh, Pitta Dhara Kala? Lavati, Grahani, Sangyam, Astyam, Chagni, Balam, Agni, Balam, Balam. Shariram dharayategni balopastamba bhita means see what are the things they have mentioned in Ashtam Kudaya life, hell, virya, oja, panchabhuta. All these are the perspective which are possible because of the agni and sapta dhatva agni. All these factors are dependent upon the grani means all the entities, these all entities are very important that is life. Hel, Virya, Oja, Panchabhuta Agni and Sapta Dhatva Agni means all these Agni are depend upon the Grahani. And what is the Grahani? Grahani is nothing but the part of this Pitta Dharakala. So disorders of Agni causes the abnormality in Grahani which leads to the generation of many diseases. Now as we have rightly said, this Pitta Dharakala which is mentioned in Ayurveda is comparable with the small intestine present uh, or mucous membrane on the small intestine present in our body. And if uh, we go to the modern literature, the structure of small intestine is adapted for the digestion and absorption. Okay. This both the things are interrelated or correlated with the, each other. And if pathology in this color takes place, what will happen? The grahani ulcers such as peptic ulcers, IBS, Crohn's disease or celiac disease, such type of diseases may take place uh, if there is the vitiation of Pitta Dharakala. Then, uh, as we have said in uh, uh, Purish Dharakala, Saiva Asti Dharakala, similarly, this uh, Pitta Dharakala is also known as the Majja Dharakala. It is mentioned in the Kalpasthan. Uh, sixth Pitta Dharakala is also known as the Majja Dharakala. How we have to compare uh, all these things, Pitta Dhara Kala can be compared with the Majja Dhara Kala. If you know, nowadays, apart from the central nervous system and the uh, peripheral nervous system, one ENS, enteric nervous system, is also emerging one and it is a part of ENS that is autonomic nervous system. Uh, it may be surprising that 95% of body serotonin is made in the bowel. See, this is very important. Serotonin is the very important being key neurotransmitter in the regulation of the mood, appetite and sleep. 
सीरोटोनिन आप सभी को पता है कि हमारी बॉडी में उसका क्या रोल है और कितना इम्पोर्टेंट है कि हमारा मूड एपेटाइट और स्लीप ये सब चीजें सीरोटोनिन के माध्यम से हमारे शरीर में रेगुलेट होती है और ये भी सरप्राइजिंग है कि 95 परसेंट हमारे बॉडी में सीरोटोनिन है तो वो बॉवेल से निकलता है तो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर को रिलेटेड विथ ईच अदर एंड गट्स कंटेनिंग सेकेंड ब्रेन That is the 200 to 600 million neurons which are present in the enteric nervous system, similar to the neurons in the spinal cord. Means spinal cord me, jitne neurons present hote ya jis tar neuron present hote hai, usi type se ya utne hi neurons hume enteric nervous system jo ki gut me dekhne ko milte hai. Ye dekhi ye bahut badi baat hai. Aur isse humko samajna chahiye ki ye jo hamare granthon me likha hoye ki ye सैव पित्त धरा या पित्त धरा कला वही मज्जा धरा कला है ये एक रिमार्केबल थिंग है सो कमिंग टू द अगेन डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस इंटेस्टिनल माइक्रोबायोटा इन्फ्लुएंस द न्यूरो डेवलपमेंट एंड कंट्रीब्यूट टू न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिसऑर्डर्स गट माइक्रोबियल इकोसिस्टम आल्सो कंसीडर्ड एज द लार्जेस्ट इंडोक्राइन ऑर्गन इन द बॉडी बायोलॉजिकल कंपाउंड्स लाइक द हार्मोन्स प्रोड्यूस हियर देन गट ब्रेन एक्सिस लिंक्स द इमोशनल एंड कॉग्निटिव सेंटर्स ऑफ ब्रेन विथ पेरिफेरल इंटेस्टाइनल फंक्शंस सो दिस थिंग्स मींस द थिंग्स ऑफ मॉडर्न साइंस और द लिटरेचर रिलेटेड टू मॉडर्न साइंस and if we interlink this literature with the ayurvedic uh, literature we can definitely say that the pitta dhara kala is also comparable with the majja dhara kala i uh, one more example uh, coming from the ayurveda that is paksha ghati tu virishanam uh, most of the uh, audience must be knowing that in this uh, paralysis the virishan is indicated and this pitta rakta prasad treatment is given then this Uh, definitely uh, this is interrelated with the means pakshavada is this is related with the nervous system and the treatment which is given is the virech so we have to think uh, all these things in the treatment part uh, coming to the uh, last but not the least kala is the seventh is the shukradhara kala uh, in this context uh, they have mentioned that सप्तमी शुक्रधरा सर्व शरीर व्यापिनी इज मेन्शन बट आई कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज द लोकल पार्ट ऑफ दिस शुक्रधरा कला दट इज द्वयंगुले दक्षिणे पार्श्वे बस्ती द्वार से चापेदा मूत्र स्त्रोत पदा शुक्रम पुरुष से प्रवर्तते कृत्न देहाश्रित शुक्रम प्रसन्न मनस तथा स्त्रीतु व्यासत छापी हर्षा तत्सम प्रवर्तते है uh, i will not go into the particular details of all this shloka uh, in short uh, what is uh, the shukradhara kala is nothing but the seminiferous uh, uh, seminiferous tubules are the ductus deferens or the ejaculatory duct all the parts through which this spermatozoa or the semen passes all this uh, membrane associated with these structures can be compared with this shukradhara kala this is the diagram related to this this functions of this uh, shukradhara kala uh, this ejaculatory ducts delivers the sperm into the urethra adding secretions and additives from the prostate necessary for the sperm functions while providing an interface between the reproductive and the urinary systems in the main 70 to 85% uh, this seminal fluids originate from the seminal vesicles it contains certain nutrients and these are having the certain roles these are not only the ingredients for example prostaglandins what is the role of prostaglandin softening of the mucus of cervix causing reverse contraction of the female reproductive parts then nutrition nutritional part is also given to the spermatozoa support the sperm cell till the fertilization so if you see that when the there is the process of fertilization the only spermatozoa and 
ovum is not responsible spermatozoa and apart from uh, spermatozoa and ovum there are a number of things which helps or which aid in the process of this fertilization and all these collage or all these membranes or the secretions which are coming from all these membranes also helps for the further process so uh, apart from sperm and ovum the other things or other factors are also equally important and in because in that context ayurveda also given that rutu shetrambu bijanam samutrat ankuru etaha okay these four dimensions which are responsible for the formation of garbha are mentioned so similarly uh, apart from the sperm and ovum this collage or other things are also important and seminal vesiculitis if the, the pathology uh, related to this disease occurs what happens if a seminal vesiculitis can cause pain in the lower abdomen scrotum penis or peritoneum painful ejaculation and blood in the semen uh, if you remember that if there is the vesication of the sukrava sotas or the pathologies related with the sukra then the similar type of symptoms you must be uh correlated with the ayurvedic literature also so definitely this seminal vesicles or this structures or this membranes can be correlated with this shukra dharakala and diseases related with this are the seminal vesiculitis tuberculosis cystosomiasis and hydatidsis these are the uh, things uh, till now we have seen that how each and every kala can be correlated with the modern anatomical structures and how uh, the their clinical perspective can be think up and if there is certain type of pathology then how uh, these colors can be used uh, one more dimension that i want to highlight through this seminar that uh, as you know that there are certain dimensions of the treatment in ayurveda some physicians focus on the tridosha this vat pitta kap कुछ चिकित्सक जो होते हैं सिर्फ वात पिता कप पे फोकस करके ट्रीटमेंट करते देर आर वन मोर फिजिशियन इन द महाराष्ट्र वैद्य दाता शास्त्री ही ओनली फोकस ऑन द पंच महाभूता एंड ही ट्रीट्स द ऑल टाइप ऑफ पेशेंट सो सिमिलरली माय हाइपोथेसिस इज दैट कला इज कैन बी द थेरापेटिक कंसिडर्ड इन द थेरापेटिक एस्पेक्ट मीन कला कैन बी द ट्रीटमेंट साइट दिस इज माय परस्पेक्टिव थ्रू दिस सेमिनार and uh, keeping in mind this perspective uh, when i was the pg guide in uh, vardha college at that time uh, we have studied on this rakta dhara kala i have given one uh, pg topic to my one of the students that was based on the atherosclerosis if atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis is a disease associated with the artery and because of the altered permeation or the deformity in the endothelial lining of the artery definitely there will be the deposition of the uh, fat or tissue in that particular artery so keeping in mind we have initiated that study that is study the anti lipolytic and anti inflammatory effect of rakta prasadan dravya in albino rat with reference to rakta dhara kala and in this study we have found some uh, good results when we have focus on this uh, rakta dhara kala or we have given treatment to uh, uh, regulate the normal function of the kala then in that cases uh, such atherosclerotic changes were uh, minimum in that particular animals we have seen uh, what is the importance of the kala that is sushrut samhita charya sthan kalpa sthan kala are uh, related with the vishavekas in snake bitten human uh, the poison occupies the kala one by one different vishavekas of different signs and symptoms can be seen sat vishavek ka varnan kiya hai unka kalao ke bare mein varnan kiya hua hai abhi time kafi ho gaya hai isliye main thoda sa fast ja raha hu isme ye sab all things as you know Uh, these are the things which are mentioned in the kalpasthana uh, related to this vishavegas uh, so through this uh, presentation you know, what uh, i want to convey the message the take home message for all the participants is that 
the kala are the internal covering of the body like the other organs means similarly twacha just like other membranes are there so kala are the internal coverings of the body like other organs then these are thin interface between the dhatu ashayas dhatu and ashay each kala perform the certain role in the body physiology kalas are susceptible for pathology depending upon the type means not necessary each and every kala will uh, refer to the uh, certain type of disease depending upon the kala the pathology may be different because the role of each kala is different in our body so depending upon the kala the pathology may be different then kala can be considered as a treatment side as uh, i priorly said then understanding of kala in context of visvega is important to treat the presented disease caused by the toxin introduced in the body through the diet or chemicals as you know 80 to 90% of our diet is full of the toxins because all the stored food contains the preservatives many things and all things come in our body uh, through these things uh, i give in simple example of this grains or atta uh, jaise ki aap jante hai ki agar hum ghar mein gehu पिसवाएंगे और उसका आटा बनाएंगे और उसको अगर छोड़ देंगे घर में और कुछ दिन वो यूज में नहीं आता है तो डेफिनेटली वहां पर कुछ चीटिया या कुछ ना कुछ चीजें लग जाती है आटे में और अगर वही आटा अगर आप कोई आशीर्वाद या ब्रांडेड सिल्वर कॉइन या कोई भी कंपनी का आटा आप घर में लाते हो और आप ऑब्जर्व करिए कि वहां पर आपको कभी कीड़े या कुछ चीटिया वीटिया कुछ देखने को नहीं मिलेगी इसका कारण यही हो सकता है कि कुछ ना कुछ प्रिजर्वेटिव टाइप का मेडिसिन वहां पर वो ऐड करते होंगे ताकि वहां पर कुछ ऐसे चीजें नहीं हो तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि आटे से लेकर जो चीजें है जो भी कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स है सब चीजें हैं सब आप जानते हैं तो इन चीजों के माध्यम से कहीं ना कहीं टॉक्सिन्स या जो विष है या जो दूषी विष है वो हमारे शरीर में आ रहे है और उनकी अगर हमें कहीं ना कहीं शरीर में प्रभाव दिखाई देता है तो डेफिनेटली जो कलाओं के माध्यम से विश्व के बारे में आचार्य सुश्रुत ने बताया है तो उनका थोड़ा सा डिटेल जानकारी या डिटेल अभ्यास करना बहुत जरूरी है ताकि कलाओं को भी हम समझे विश्व को भी समझे और उनके कारण माध्यम से शरीर में जो भी पैथोलॉजी हो रही है या विकार हो रही है उनके साथ में हम कम्बैट कर सके तो इस माध्यम से अः इस प्लेटफॉर्म के थ्रू मैं यही कहना चाहता हूँ कि कला एक शरीर रचना का एक स्ट्रक्चरल एंटिटी नहीं होकर एक वो फंक्शनल फिजियोलॉजिकल पैथोलॉजिकल और ट्रीटमेंट पर्सपेक्टिव से भी कला को हमने समझना चाहिए सीखना चाहिए और उस तरह से विचार करना चाहिए ताकि आयुर्वेद में जो कुछ कष्ट साध्य व्याधि आती है कुछ और भी विकार है कि जिनमें एप्सोलोट ट्रीटमेंट अभी भी अवेलेबल नहीं है तो मेरा ये मानना है कि कला जैसे और भी अन्य विषय है कि इनको अगर हम गंभीरता से पढ़ेंगे उनको समझेंगे तो डेफिनेटली कहीं ना कहीं आयुर्वेद के उत्थान में आयुर्वेद चिकित्सा में इसका हमें लाभ होगा इन्हीं सब शब्दों के साथ में आयोजकों ने जो मुझे यह बोलने का मौका दिया है मुझे मेरे विचार प्रस्तुत करने के लिए मंच दिया है ये सब के लिए इस महाविद्यालय के प्राचार्य डॉक्टर सुभाष वाघे सर एमएचएस के ऑब्जर्वर संपत भटाने सर तथा इस प्रोग्राम की कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर मुनाल डांगे एवं उनकी समस्त टीम का मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ धन्यवाद यदि आपके कोई प्रश्न है तो आमंत्रित है धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच सर आपने दिया हुआ ज्ञान हमें आगे बहुत काम में आएगा और एक कला शरीर का एक अलग जो नॉलेज है वो आज हमको ज्ञान मिला है उसका और इवन नॉट इन एनाटॉमिकल पर्पज इवन फिजियोलॉजिकल एंड वाइज पर्पज ऑल्सो हमको हमारे कंसेप्ट कुछ क्लियर हो गए तो इसलिए मैं दिल से धन्यवाद चाहूंगी सो ओवर टू आगे सर सर प्लीज and uh, you know uh, i will put my comments after because it is now the time for the chairperson to yes, yes, intervene yes, and put his yes, put her yes. comments uh, on both the sessions
Uh, before inviting, but before we, but uh, listen, but before you mm -hmm. invite madam, uh, you please introduce the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, about yes. Madam. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, before inviting today's chair per person for the remark, I would like to introduce Dr. Alka Chade, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Alka Chade, ma'am, she is uh, graduated from the Government Ayurved College, Nagpur, and uh, uh, post graduated from the Shri Ayurved uh, Mahavidyale, Nagpur, and uh, he have total experience of uh, academic is 19 years and above. Uh, she has published uh, 12, uh, 12 research articles, and uh, book published by her is Sankshipta Marma Vidyan. Also, she is also an honored as chairperson in national web seminar exploring the concept of Kala and its applicability at MGAC Vardha on, um, and also honored as a chairperson in national seminar on pain management at BMAM Nagpur, honored as a resource person in NIMACOM 2018 and um, also honored as a, uh, also organized secretary of one day seminar, national seminar on Mahasrotasso Vivechan 2019, and uh, invited as a uh, and a board of studies member at Ellen City University Bhopal, and a subject expert in meeting of the doctor research committee, center in charge and center observer of MUHS, and uh, uh, ex. Exclusive member in third national conference on update on update in Ayurveda, and she is awarded by late DG Hatte Award for experience excellent in research and teaching in Yachna Sharir by Ayurveda Mitra Samiti Jabalpur, awarded as a national best teacher at Pune by Ayurveda Teacher Association for the year 2020-21. So now I uh, welcome the uh, Dr. Chara Alka ma'am. Uh, to uh, give chairperson remarks. So, Alka ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Brunal. Yes, First of all, uh, congratulates uh, to uh, Rachna Anveshan uh, 2022 team members, Dr. Subhash Vage, sir, and uh, organizing committee, Brunal and Shikan. Also, congratulates to expert speakers, Dr. Sachin and Dr. Subhash. Both are... <laughs> I... Um, Proud, uh, it's a proud moment for me that um, both are experts. Uh, one is uh, Dr. Subhash is a uh, diamond of Ayurveda, uh, rising diamond of Ayurveda and Sachin sir is a gold of Ayurveda. So hard to be for a uh, uh, moderate him. Uh, first of all, I um, uh, go with fetal internal development in uh, Ayurveda uh, and contemporary science. Dr. Subhash give the up-to-date knowledge with the uh, very informative and for UG, PG and PhD students. Embryology is the um, beneficial for the physicians uh, since ancient era. Ayurveda has a depth material about uh, embryology. The session will provide the useful, deep and informative about the Ayurvedic embryology. Uh, sir has a uh, given microscopic anga pratanga correlated with modern science, very informative and correlated with the uh, Ayurvedic science and contemporary science, giving the comp and compiling Narada Puran, Garbhopanishad, and uh, uh, Bhattopal Tika, uh, etc., along with Charak Sushut and um, uh, Bhagavata, and uh, uh, compiling extract and related references would give good uh, gist uh, uh, biological basics uh, explained in Ayurveda. We will born and fixed with the uh, uh, predator mind, the body and mind constitution, which also makes our body type and mental makeover. Nicely explained with simple language. In modern era, age of the fetus calculated by Hassi's rule. And but ancient, uh, our Acharya measured it properly and giving with shloka, put it in shloka proper. Thank you, Dr. Vagesan. Now I uh, come to the uh, clinical applications uh, of Kala Sharid in Ayurveda. Kala is an important part of Ayurveda anatomy, means which form the envelope of over two organs. 
कलाज आर द इम्पॉर्टंट फिजिकल एंड फंक्शनल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द बॉडी एंड टेक पार्ट इन मेनी इम्पॉर्टेंट फंक्शन कंसेप्ट ऑफ कला शरीर हेयर बी स्टडीड एनालिटिकली इन द रेडियंस एंड हिस्टोलॉजिकल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट्स यूटिलिटी इट्स क्लिनिक एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट्स कंटेम्प्ररी वेल एक्सप्लेन एंड स्ट्रक्चरल पैथोलॉजिकल एंड फंक्शनल पैथोलॉजी फोकसिंग ऑन क्लिनिकल अप्लीकेशन ऑफ ईच कला एंड वेल एक्सप्लेन एंड स्प्लिट देर टॉपिक नाइसली एंड कंपेरिंग विथ मॉडर्न पैथोलॉजिकल ऑफ कला दस द वेरी वेरी वेल एक्सप्लेन सर thus the no insights knowledge of the kala is important for the physicians to make the diagnosis of the right time and also to know if uh, the this is at the level of kala thank you sir thank you so much for inviting me for the moderator of this session both sessions are very nice thank you thank you so much madam for your valuable words uh, dr now i uh, now for the last uh, we uh, we have the vote of thanks i am uh, welcoming the kripali jangle ma'am from the department of swastha vritti in our college to give the vote of thanks over to kripali ma'am ma'am kripali ma'am are you there yes yes yes, yes welcome ma'am okay good afternoon to all i deem it a great honor to and privilege to profuse the vote of thanks today today we all witness the great academic feast from both the speakers first and foremost i thank to our guest speaker dr sachin khedekar sir for his wonderful talk on clinical application of a kala sharir in ayurveda kala sharir is one such a concept which need a great exploration and dr khedekar sir has done a great uh, justice with that he explained the topic very precisely i am very much thankful to you sir on behalf of a jm city similarly thank i thank to uh, today's our eminent chair person dr alka charde ma'am for her wonderful remark thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for your spending your valuable time with us i am also thankful to our principal sir dr subhash wagi for his thoughtful provoking lecture on ancient wisdom of intrauterine fetal uh, uh, fetal development in ayurveda and contemporary sciences thank you very much sir for your kind support and nice talk last but not least i am thankful to all the audience for attending the session calmly and making the session successful once again i owe my gratitude to all and with the permission of hod of shari rachna and respected principal sir i conclude the session here thank you for for contrary just just a, just a uh, few things from my side okay sir uh, uh from the uh, lecture of dr, uh, dr. sachin khedekar sir i reminded one thing is that uh it, the lecture was on kala sharir and what is mentioned uh, in intrauterine fetal life uh, fetal development in the first uh, month uh, or in the first week kalalam jayate that kalalam also coincides with the kala actually that that structure is membrane structure because of that membrane structure the acharyas have used the word kalal second part is the very important point raised by uh dr sachin khedekar sir with regard to purush dhara and majja dhara kala and the gut brain axis is that if you see in the mental disorders also when we were studying uh the bms course we used to study the mano manovas rotas rogas manorogas and acharyas have suggested to do uh, the shodhana vamana or virechana in unmad apasmar etc so you see why now we can understand why they have uh, suggested to perform shodhana in uh, manoha rogas because the manas is also you see 90% of the serotonin is produced in the bowel the mood elevator 
so that is that connection is uh, very well established by dr sachin khedikar sir so all in all i thank you uh, i thank from my bottom of my heart to the dr sachin khedikar sir for accepting our invitation for this program and you have wonderfully enlightened the subject and really we are uh, we got a lot of knowledge and new insight to the uh, subject of kalashari uh, and i also thankful to the uh, our mhs observer sampad bhatani sir who is spending his valuable time with us and he is uh, who is the mhs observer for rest of the uh, our webinars also and i also thank uh, dr alka charade madam for uh, sparing her valuable time and evaluating uh, both of us and similarly i thank the president of uh, gsc alumni association for being associated with us uh, for this program and all the audience and all my team dr mrunal uh, dr hadrore and uh, dr kripali thank you very much and stay tuned with us thank, thank you very you much sir. thank you, very thank you and here thank i you, thank you. i declare the session to conclude it thank you so much thank you sir